in this video, we are going to continue to discuss how we use relay algorithm to simulate a 2D projectile motion. When we finish doing the simulation, this is what you expect. The particles being launched from an initial location would um, <coughs> follow a parabolic trajectory uh, as shown on the screen. So how are we going to simulate this? First of all, we have to uh, recall the physics that describes the two-dimensional projectile motion. So this is the most basic thing you should have you should have learned in your ZCA one 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 course. So let us look at the physics of a two-dimensional projectile motion. Here it is, a two-dimensional projectile motion. Uh, so let us begin from a projectile starting from an origin 0, 0. It is launched at an initial speed, v not at an initial angle theta. And as a result of this projectile motion, it would draw a trajectory that looks like this, and it will hit a maximal height of h, where the time taken to reach the height of h is t half, given by v naught sine theta over g. You can derive this relationship by using the usual kinematic equation for a two-dimensional projectile motion. Then the time taken to reach h is then uh, given by t half, and this t half and h can be easily related to each other by using the relationship that the vy square is equal to uy square minus 2gh. So at the height of this maximum, the v, that is the velocity along the y direction, will temporarily stop. Therefore, it becomes 0. Then uh, you would rewrite this g, uh, this h, in terms of um, uy. So the uy would be this one divided by 2g, and uy by definition is just the initial velocity of the particles um, along the y direction, which is v naught sine theta. So this is our uy. Okay. So here you get this uh, v naught square sine square theta over 2g. Then the range of the flight r is just simply given by the velocity along the y directions, which I write it as u x, which is a constant equals to v naught cos theta. So this constant u naught x multiplied with 2 t half is giving you the uh, range of the projectile motion. So the time taken from here to from here to here to here is a total of 2 t half. Therefore, multiplying 2 t half with the constant velocity of ux, then we give you the range of r, which is equal to 2 t half multiplied with uh, v naught cos theta. Okay, so here we assume that initially the particles has an initial velocity. of x at 0, located at 0, and the initial velocity y, when it's initial position of y is 0 and 0, and x dot at 0 is just equals to v naught cos theta, and the y dot 0 is just v naught sine theta. So these are the initial condition for the projectile motion. Then uh, the formula for the accelerations along the x and y direction is the equations of motion for this projectile motion. The equation of motion, there are two. One is for the x coordinate, the other one is for the y coordinate. For the x coordinate, the equation of motion is ax, which is d2x dt square, 
equals to zero because there's no acceleration along the x directions. Whereas for the y coordinate, the a y, which is the accelerations along the y directions, is equals to minus g. So in this case, we assume the positive y is going up and positive x is going to the right. Therefore, the g is in this opposite direction. So the g is going down, whereas the y is going up. So with this as our reference uh, reference system, then uh, we write down d2y dt squared equals to negative g. So we have the equations of motion for x and y. We have the initial condition for x and y. And then we also understand the range or the r of r and h, which describe the size of the um, simulation box and the time scale of t equals to t half, then we are now able to begin our simulation for the um, projectile motion. So if you look at the sample code, this is the sample code that implement the valet algorithm. Let me try to reproduce the valet algorithm here uh, from scratch. So I need to have all this stuff um, prepared for me to do the simulation. Okay, so then the first thing I want to do is to define my constant. Here I have to set the m. Well, I don't really need an m here because there's no mass that goes in, but I need to define my g, which is a constant, 9.81. I need to define the initial speed v0. I'll take it as say 10. And then I need to implement the theta, which is say uh, the initial velocity, say 45 degree. So 45 degree, uh, remember theta in Python has to be expressed in unit of um, radian. Therefore, I have to convert 45 degree into uh, radian, which is equals to mp dot pi divided by 180. So that is defining the angle of theta as 45 degree, but is expressed in uh, radian. Then I need to decide what is the um, time scale. The time scale I call it t half. So according to the definition of t half I just mentioned, is equals to the v naught multiply with sine of theta multiply uh, divided by g. Okay, so that is the um, time, the half, the um, time scale. Then I have to define the range, uh, which is just the range of the time uh, for flight along the x direction. And also I have to define my height of h, which is equal to v naught um, square. Uh, v naught square divided by g. And the v naught have to be also multiplied with sine square. Sine and p sine theta square. Um, this will multiply with v naught square divided by g. Um, but for r, I don't really uh, define it here because uh, I'll explain later why I don't express the r. Um, but anyway, I'll explain to you later on. Um, but the height is required to describe the height of my simulation box. Then, um, I have to decide how long I want to do the simulation. So let me try to express my t last as the time of my simulation. How long should I simulate it? I'll say I'll try to simulate at say 2.5 multiply with um, t half. So this is the length of time I decide to simulate. So during this t last uh, time, then you can actually estimate how long the uh, particles to fly, right? So if it's flying along here, if you have x particles that is flying at um, v naught cos theta, and if you let it to fly and then last for say a uh, total amount of uh, t last, then the total distance travels along the x direction will be just this multiplied with t last. So this product of t last and the velocity v not cos theta will give me the length 
of my simulation box along the x direction. So I'll call my um, x last as just the product of the um, velocity v not multiply with uh, n p sine theta, n p cos theta with t last. Okay, so that would define the length of the simulation box along the x directions. Um, then it begins with x, well not x plus, I call this x right. Okay, it's sitting on the right hand side of the simulation box and x left I started with as 0. So that would be used as a number to indicate the beginning and end of the simulation box along the x direction. And I'll call the y high as the height of my simulation. So the height would then be maximally rich as h, right? So I have to define my h as a function of v naught square sine square over 2g. So here I would first define my height. Uh, it's already been defined here. That's good. So um, y high is defined to be the height, whereas y low. So y low would be the uh, distance travels by the uh, projectile along the y direction. Uh, if the t last, if the t last is t last, if it's lasting for more than two t half, you can imagine that the particle will actually um, fly to the horizontal line, and then it will become uh, below the the the, the initial uh, position of y after it launched. You know what I mean? Like initially y is here when it runs for two more than two t half then the y coordinate will actually fall below the initial level when it first launched so these values of y could then be calculated as just equals to y equals to remember the formula y equals to ut minus half gt square okay so i'm going to use this as the estimate of what goes below the uh, horizontal line at the end of the simulation. So here, I'm going to use this as my um, guide to tell me what is the lowest point of y that will be reached by the projectile motion. So I'll call this h low to be ut. Here ut is my v naught multiplied with np um, sine theta. Okay. So this would be the uh, y coordinate. So this would be the uh, u, and then the t would be actually the t last. Okay, t last. Uh, that would be the t last, and then I will have to put in the factor of minus half g t square of t last. So I'm going to minus zero point five multiply zero point five g t last. So that is expected. Um, we um, y low is expected to be uh, the lowest possible values of y when t is exceeding t uh, to t naught, and then it fall below the y will fall below the horizontal level. Okay, u t minus half g t square. I hope that I'm correct. So this is u t. Uh, minus half g t square. Okay, so let me execute to see whether I have an error. I have pressed the button and I didn't complete. So I expect that these few lines are correct. So let me continue. Uh, I have already um, calculated or estimated the total simulation time, the grid length for the x component, and also the um, the height of the y component in my simulation box, and and I have to further um, impose my initial condition. So let me call my initial condition as x naught. So x naught is just equals to zero, and the initial condition for my y naught value is just y. Then um, the x dot, okay, x dot, x dot 
um, is my velocity for the x. So here, instead of calling it x dot, I'll call it x, x, vx. Vx here refers to the velocity of the particles along the x coordinate. And its initial velocity is just equals to v naught x. And the values of v naught x is the v naught uh, multiplied with np uh, sine theta. Okay. The theta. So here, um, the v naught x here is just the initial velocity of the. Uh, yeah, this is a one and this is the one. Okay, we not sign and we not cos. We have another one which is the we not y. Uh, we not y is a sign. We not x. It should be the cos. Okay, so that is the initial value, not initial condition. The initial value that would be assumed by z x y. We not uh, Vx and Vy at the, at the beginning. Okay, so these are the numbers that I have prepared. So now I have to go to the next um, stage. That is, I have to prepare for the so-called container of the variable. So how many variables we need to describe the projectile motion in our simulations using the valet algorithm? So we need to have the x and y coordinate, and also we need to have the x dot coordinate so here the x dot is just your vx and also we have to have a container that describes the velocity of the um, particles along the y direction so we have to have um, variable x and y vx vy on top of that we also have to have an um, variable that describes ax and ay um, for the particles in 2d so we need a total of six container sort of like variable so we need x and we have to declare the x as an um, empty dictionary in the beginning and we have to declare y we have to declare vx as an empty uh, dictionary vy and dictionary ax and dictionary ay as an empty dictionary so here is this so these are the empty dictionary and have assigned the values of x at 0, the time at 0, um, and is equals to x naught. And I assign the values of um, the vx0 as the vx0. Then um, for the y at the beginning, y0 and v y0, is like this. Okay. And then we have to prepare the time grid, right? The time grid is prepared in terms of n. So I'm going to uh, describe my um, n. So I have to decide what is the length of the time grid. So imagine that I start with um, 0. This is the time. And finally, the time will end at t last. Right? The t last here, I chosen it to be 2.5. Uh, t of half, then I will subdivide it into the intervals, and each interval has the values of um, delta t. So the delta t is just simply equals to t last divided by the numbers of intervals and t. So I have to define my nt. Uh, so I choose nt to be some number, say for example uh, 100, then the delta t would then be the intervals, which is t last divided by nt. Okay, so that would that would define the intervals of t. Uh, but then I have to then uh, define an, an array, which is just the range of nt. So I'll subdivide the t um, into n t intervals, and then instead of Writing the t as t, I actually create an n array which has the same amount of n t sub intervals, and for each point here, it corresponds to the time here. So when n is n, 
then the corresponding time Tn is just equal to n multiplied by delta t. That's how I uh, describe my time variable of t in terms of Tn, and Tn is just dependent on the values of t. So once I have created that, then I can start to write n for loop. Um, for n in n array, then I'll just print out the n and see whether my code is working correctly. So I can see that I have printed out a hundred values of subinterval for n. So now I'll begin to code my uh, relay algorithm here. So first of all, I would like to code my algorithm for x, and then I'm going to code it for um, the y. So the variable of x uh, should be coded um, according to the uh, notes that I've just shown here. Uh, let me call out the notes. So the notes is actually been mentioned here. You have to first um, calculate the x and then ax and vx. We have to repeat this for vy, uh, ay, and also for y as well. Okay, so let us do it for x at the beginning. Okay, so here I have to calculate my x at n equals to uh, 0. So here you can, so this is n, right? n is the array beginning from a 0. So here, um, if you put n to be uh, in n array, then the first number of n that appears here would be uh, 0, right? So in order to avoid that, then maybe I should say here is n uh, at um, plus 1, right? So this would means you begin to calculate x at 1 instead of x at 0, because x at 1, x at 0 has already been calculated. So here, maybe I should change a little bit. Okay, so I think maybe this should not be ranging from 1 to t, uh, from 0 to t, but should begin from 1 to n. I think that is avoiding the values of 0 in n a r r. So when n is to be iterated in n a r r, then n a r r begin from 1. Okay, so here I calculate x at n, which begin from 1, is now from 0. So the values of x at n is then equals to x at n, the previous n, um, like this. Okay, so the n begins from uh, 1. Um, no, I think I was a little bit uh, rushed just now when I add an n here. I think you shouldn't add the n here. I should take, be taken off. So the n should begin from 0. So here you calculate the x at um, n plus 1 based on x of n. So when n is in n a r r begin from 0, then you can calculate the x of um, 1 instead of from the 0. Okay, anyway, uh, I just corrected this. n a r r should begin from range of 0 to n t, and then you calculate the x of the next step. Uh, n, uh, x at n plus 1 is dependent on the x n at the previous step plus the uh, product of um, Vx, okay, at the previous steps, uh, multiply with uh, delta t. I think that is this uh, uh, delta, but delta t is the values of the um, delta t multiplied with Vx give you the displacements in x, okay? Uh, okay, so I think that is quite correct. Then we will add it with another um, values, which is um, half multiplied with the values of acceleration of a x at the previous steps. So what is the uh, and then here I think it's multiplied with um, with a uh, delta t that is square. Okay, so that is the Boolean algorithm. So we are referring to here the Wolle algorithm uh, at this point. Okay, half ax uh, t squared. Then the an ax at n has to be defined before you evaluate it. And according to the equation of motion, the accelerations of the x coordinate at any time is always just simply equals to zero. 
okay now once we have estimated or calculated the x at n plus 1 then we have to calculate the ax at the next step this is the acceleration of the x coordinate at the next step it is still equals to 0 because the equations of motion for the x coordinate as i mentioned in the previous uh, explanations is just equals to 0 okay so here uh, we have calculated the um, a at next step then the last one in the valley algorithm for the x coordinate is to calculate the v of x at the next step and is equals to the value of the vx at the previous step plus okay plus the average of the um, a of x at the previous step plus the a of x at the next step so this is the average of the acceleration along the x direction multiplied with delta t so that would then implement the update for the vx which is this uh, third line v of x and the next line is v of x in the previous step plus the average of a times the delta t so that is the implementations for the vx update then i'm going to um, copy this and paste it in the next line for the y so here I'm going to change it for a y uh, this x will become y a x will become a y we x become y so i'm going to change this to become y uh, y and a x will become a y and then the rest will also be the same the v x become y this is a y a y but here the a y at the previous steps has to be um, different for the y component, the accelerations of y according to the equation of motions is given by minus g. Okay, so irrespective of the position of y, the a y is always equals to a constant. So here we just define this to be minus g, and the a n at the um, next step is also a constant. So these two are the same. Right? The, acceleration of the y component is always equals to minus g not minus 9 okay it's minus g minus g okay so that would finish the update of the y coordinate um, then we have to then uh, plot the graph now to plot the graph we have to prepare a um, plot so let me say plot i have to set the x limit um, and also the y limit so the x limit has to be the range of the uh, x axis and is starting from x left and x right so the x right and x left has already been defined earlier on uh, it's here this is your x left x right then i have my y high and y low so i have to fix the um, limit of the x axis to be y low and y high okay I think that is more or less uh, okay. Then I'm going to display it. I'm going to plot the uh, coordinate of x and y, uh, x and like this, and then y and like this. So this is going to plot the point of x and y, and I want to plot it as um, a uh, point. So this will plot the point of x and y at the instance of n. Um, then I'm going to plot and show. Okay. Uh, then in order to do a simulation, I think I need uh, this um, display, display clear and display. Okay. So that would plot the display, display for me. So let me see if I'm working. If this is working. Okay. So um, then I'm going to see if it works. Do you think it works? not sure but let us give it a go so i i just um run it okay uh got any error yes there's error some error delta t is not properly uh defined delta is defined is typed as delta t so where is my delta so here this is my delta t delta t okay so i think that should be correct 
Uh, now the problem is that it is not fixed. The, the move particles is moving, but you can see that the x axis and y axis are not fixed properly uh, because I plot it outside. I fix it outside. So probably I should bring this in and then paste it here. Um, then it will fix the coordinate system, and then you can see uh, with this fixed coordinate system, the motion of the particles. The particles can only be seen to move with respect to a fixed uh, reference. So this is the coordinate, uh, this is a projectile motion. Now in order to let it to display better, what you do is that um, you add in two more things, that is the x directions, uh, vertical line and horizontal line. So I think you call this ax uh, vertical line uh, at zero. So this um, vertical line will plot and a uh, straight line vertically uh, at x equals to zero and then you can also plot ax uh, horizontal line um, at zero that would display the uh, x and y ax horizontal line and ax vertical line okay so in the horizontal line vertical line um, i think that is how uh, is shown the vertical line is actually here, which is not shown explicitly here. Uh, you only show the vertical, the horizontal line. So this is the horizontal line. Okay, vertical line is coincide with this. I think okay, it's, it's coincide with uh, with this side. Um, now you can actually do a better job. So let's just try to overlap the uh, trajectory with the uh, motion. So, so let us try to do one more thing. Um, what I do, I just want to show you that you can actually um, show the array of um, all the coordinates of x and y uh, one by one. Um, I think, let's see. Uh, So here I uh, cut and paste and the uh, theoretically expected uh, trajectory of the x and y. Okay, so the x and y uh, coordinate can actually can be calculated theoretically as this the x coordinate uh, as a function of time is just equal to the initial velocity, uh, initial position of the trajectory time plus the constant v on x multiplied with the time. Uh, given the initial theta and the magnitude of v naught, so is the y coordinate instantaneously. The y value of the coordinate is given by this formula: y naught plus v y naught square minus half g t square. So these are the theoretical expectation values of how the x and y would change in time then you can generate all the coordinate values of the x and y and plot the trajectory of it. Okay, So let us try to uh, include this into our uh, trajectory. Um, so let me cut and paste here and then uh, I'm going to paste it in these uh, locations here. Then I'm going to plot my x and y uh, so here, I'm going to also display not only uh, the plot, but also the plot of um, x a r r and y a r r. It will overlap with it will overlap with the uh, the the simulations x uh, y a r r and x a r r. So then you can see how the point is changing on the locations, on the locus or the trajectory of the XAR, YAR. So it's like very difficult to see, I think because I have not done a good job when I define my XAR, YAR, I should just ask it to plot a, a line, okay, uh, just a dotted line uh, with a line, line width which is small. Okay, so that is showing how the simulations of the particles moving along a trajectory which is expected to uh, 
to fly. Okay, so the expectation values of x and y coordinate are just given by this formula uh, from theory. So you can now show that theoretically the the trajectory is given by this dotted orange color line, and the simulations of the trajectory is indeed according to the Boole algorithm is actually flying and overlapping on the expected trajectory. That's how you simulate the two-dimensional uh, projectile motions using the algorithm. So you can try to run and understand the code and see if you can translate the simulation uh, into a uh, video instead of using the display.display .display method.